so, so on the verge of something so huge. And uh, I, just, I just want to continue tonight on our teaching about prayer uh, because I believe Sunday, Sunday is going to be a, um, <clears throat> a catalyst day. I really do. I, I believe as we, we launch our one-day strategy in, the, in its fullness, um, and as we gather here a Sunday morning, um, just going to two services and believing God for increase and in harvest, I, I'm just sensing that something is, is on the verge. And I don't know about you, but I want to I be a part of it. Amen. I do. I want to be a part of what God is going to do because it's not about it's not about uh, Pastor Kim or, or or me. It's 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 and even about our team. It's about the kingdom of God being demonstrated in the earth, and it's about a city being awakened to the reality of God's presence and power. Um, and so I I I just know. It's going, it is such an important moment. It's a threshold. It's an entering into uh, a new season. And if you're not familiar with the one-day strategy, uh, then we've been talking about it for weeks and about how God challenged us to challenge the people of God uh, to give one day, one day a week to God. And if we would all give God one day, amazing things would happen. Our life would be, would be tremendously transformed by God. And I'm totally convinced of that. Amen? If we give him the first day of the week, if we'll give him Sunday morning, the Sunday morning experience where we experience revival, we experience the power, the presence of God together, and then in our first service and our second service, and then in our first service we're going to be having uh, our classes that are going to be going on, our life courses that are going to disciple, that are going to encourage, that are going to strengthen uh, right now, we're going to be strengthening marriages. We're going to be strengthening prayer lives, uh, our fresh start and our finished strong class, discipleship classes. I mean, it's, it's, they're going to be going on during the first service, and then all those folks, uh, along with others, will come and be a part of our second service. And uh, and then the, the then a Sunday night uh, is our discipleship experience. And through our life groups, they're going to be going all over the city. We're excited about that. We have some new life groups. Uh, we have some new leaderships. It's going to be wonderful. And if you're not a part of a life group yet, uh, I encourage you to become part of a life group. And I'm sure there will be opportunity Sunday to get connected with that. And, and I think there's even information out there right now. You can look at all the life groups and where they're at, where they're going to be meeting and what time and all that. And uh, then Invade uh, is going to be taking place Sunday night. It's their Sunday night premiere. Amen. And they're going to blow it up over there, the, the young adults and the uh, youth, the students. Uh, are, are going to have an amazing time. I'm saying this for a reason. And then our children are going to be meeting for discipleship. And just see, th- these are not, just to, to reiterate this, because uh, there was a time that we offered these type of things on Sunday nights, but they were really just like child care. And they were just, you know, keeping the youth occupied while their parents went to a small group. This is totally different. Uh, th- this is going to be a revival and discipleship experience for our, our youth and our, and our young adults and our children and they're going to get so much, amen. What, matter of fact, what they're getting tonight, right now, they're going to be getting on Sunday night. And uh, we're just believing that God's going to raise up a movement, amen, through the invade and the student ministry. And it's going to touch a city. I believe that. I believe that so strong uh, in my spirit. And, uh, and so, see, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going over this because I want us to understand how huge this is. It's not just an idea. It's not just another way of doing church. I believe it is a strategic thing that God has given us to launch us into a new season of multiplication and increase, spiritually and numerically, amen? And, uh, and so uh, I, I'm just, I just want to talk about where we are and, and, and the importance of what's going to be taking place here next Wednesday, the importance of the gap meeting, the importance of gap prayer, God answers prayer, the importance of corporate prayer. Because you have to understand, corporate prayer is the seedbed of all other ministry. No other ministry will exceed the level of the prayer that is released into it. Did you, did you get that? This is important because now that we have a strategy, now that we say this is what we're doing, please understand strategies don't build the kingdom. 
Strategies don't advance the kingdom. Prayer advances the kingdom. Amen? And so this is important. What we're going to be doing here on Wednesday night is the engine that's going to move everything forward. Yes. It's what, it's what makes it from just being another idea to being a strategic thing that God, in the spirit that God has set up for the moment that creates a new season. And so, and so I just want, I want to work on that, you know, uh, just, to, just a little bit tonight. This year our theme is love God, heal people. And as, as I go over that over and over and over in my spirit, I see where this really relates to where we're at right now. <coughs> Excuse me, and what God is doing. Uh, our, 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 our faith is put on the fact that this year at Fresh Start Church, we will love God intimately and heal people deeply. That we will love God intimately and heal people deeply. Our, our theme verse, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 and 39 says, love, love the Lord God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God intimately and heal people deeply. This is what we're learning so far this year is that our God is a heart God. Our God, he doesn't, God is not a head God. He's a heart God. And, and, and the greatest commandment is that we love him, not with our head, but with our heart. He is a God of passion. Amen. He is a God that wants us to be passionate and to be intimate with him. And one of the avenues in which that takes place is prayer. Prayer is huge. Matter of fact, you really cannot have an intimate relationship with God without a prayer life. See, God is a heart God. He's a heart God. And, uh, and, and, and I want to just uh, look at, at a verse that's so powerful. It's only three words long, but it's so powerful. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That's what I want to speak over the house tonight. That's what I want to speak over you and I and, and Fresh Start Church tonight is that we would pray without ceasing. I know, I know when we read that verse, you're saying, Pastor, that's impossible, but apparently not. If it was impossible, Paul would not, would not have uh, 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 made that command. That's a command. The way that, that statement is put together, it's a command. He's calling for continued prayer. Pray without ceasing. And so what Paul is doing here is, he, is he's calling us uh, to go beyond, calling us to go beyond the activity of prayer uh, to living in the attitude in the atmosphere of prayer. See, there's something greater than just the activity of prayer. It's an attitude of prayer. It's an atmosphere of prayer. Every church ought to have an attitude of prayer. Every church ought to have an atmosphere of prayer over it. Amen? Uh, uh, in modern church language, we call it a prayer culture. Jesus called it a house of prayer. Uh, amen? It, 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 is, it is this attitude and it is this atmosphere of prayer. So he's calling us to this. See, I, I want you to understand, guys, prayer is not an option. It is a necessity. In Luke 21, 36, Jesus uh, said when he was talking about the end time, right in the middle, or excuse me, at the end of at, at a, at a, uh, at a teaching of end time theology, Jesus says, watch therefore, in Luke 21, 36, watch therefore, pray always. Somebody say, pray always. He said, pray always. And then in Luke 18, 1, Jesus said uh, in a parable that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Men always ought to pray. Always ought to pray. And then in Ephesians 6, 18, he said, praying always with all prayer. See, what Jesus was giving us here, and then along with Jesus comes Paul, the great apostle in Ephesians 6, 18, begins, begins to give us an end time strategy. He begins to say, when we get to the end of this thing, the most important thing the people of God can do, and the most important thing the church of God can do is pray. And not just pray as an activity, but pray always. Pray always. And so, and so in Ephesians 6, he, he's telling us there, along with this parable in Luke 18, 1, when Jesus talks about the men ought to pray and not lose heart. He's giving us insight, and he's telling us spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare is this. Either you pray or you lose. Either you pray or you lose. It's simple. Either you pray or you lose. You're not going to come out on top in end time spiritual warfare unless you pray. Uh, he said you're going to pray or lose. You choose. Pray or lose. Pray or lose. It's simple. Amen. And so God is calling us to pray. That's why Paul said pray without ceasing. And in Ephesians 6, of course, we know he's talking about the evil day. He's talking about putting on the armor of God, the context of that scripture, pray always with all prayer. And when, when, you, when you look at the term evil day, it's referring, uh, it, it, seem, it seems to give us an idea when things seem to be at their worst, an evil day, when things seem to be at their worst. 
And so, so here, here's what we know as a child of God, that when things seem to be at their worst, God is at his best. Because when things seem to be at their worst, God is calling his people to pray. Pray. Because when people pray, what seems to be at its worst can turn to its best and become a moment and an opportunity of an unbelievable possibilities when the people of God pray. Amen. So, so don't be discouraged if things seem to keep getting worse. Because as things keep getting worse, the call to prayer is greater. And God is calling us to pray always. Somebody say pray always. In the evil day, then, we have this idea that there are moments, there are seasons that are marked by God, uh, that he wants to uh, release some level of manifestation of his purpose. In time, there are some moments that are just marked. There, There are moments over the church. There are moments over the church in general. There are moments over individual churches in general. There are moments over our personal lives that are marked. They are marked. There are seasons that God has already set up. This says, this is where I'm going to step into their life, and I'm going to manifest into their life, and I'm going to reveal myself to them at a level that they have never seen before. There are moments that are marked, but you have to understand that these moments that are marked are moments that Satan will do his best to stop. When you, get, when you begin to move into a moment where God says, I'm going to reveal my love to you. I'm going to reveal my grace to you. I'm going to reveal my provision to you. I'm going to reveal my healing power to you. I'm going to reveal reveal my greatest purpose to you. When you get to those moments uh, that God is ready to do so, then, then, the, then there, there is an attack of the enemy of resistance. There is an attack of the enemy that comes, and he will do his best to, to shrink the season. Watch me, because when God gets ready to move you into another season, it will be a season of enlargement. He will move you into something that you've never done before, in an area you've never been in before. God does not have to replay. God is so great. God is so beyond us, that God doesn't have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. you got to understand that God has something for your life that you've never done, never seen, and never experienced before. Yes, sir. And, and so, so when you get to those times, they're marked. They're marked by God already. And we're moving toward those, and we're moving into those. Walk, walk with me on this. And so the enemy will come, and he, but he, if, if he cannot stop the season, he will try to minimize and shrink it. And minimize the manifestation of God. You see, let, let me just, you need to write this down and tweet this because this is powerful. We cannot afford to ignore spiritual opposition. Many people live their life just thinking it doesn't matter and it's just hard sometimes. And we just think, man, I'm just going through, I'm just, I'm just walking through a season of bad things happening. I'm just walking through a season of unusual stress and, and pressure. I'm just walking through a season that I, I just feel discouraged and I just seem like darkness is all around me and heaven is shut up and, and all of that. See, see, we must never ignore, never, we cannot afford to ignore spiritual opposition because spiritual opposition is a sign. Everybody say a sign. It is a sign that, that we, are, we are getting ready to move into another season. Well, see, I, I have come to this conclusion. I think sometimes the enemy knows our, knows where our, our next season better than we do. Because he is a spiritual being. He, he sees what God is doing in the invisible. And God always works in the invisible before he works in the visible. In other words, this is why sometimes you feel like things ought to be happening, but you don't see them yet. You feel like it ought to be better than it is. Yeah, I don't understand why I can't see what I feel. You see, that's because it is happening in the spirit. It just hasn't started happening in the natural yet. And this, this, is, the, this is the place, if you're not careful, we become very frustrated. Uh, and, we become, and we become disappointed. And many times we give up on pressing through. But see, you've got to press through because eventually you've got to pull out of the supernatural into the natural so you can see what you've been feeling, what you've been knowing, what you understand should be happening all the time. Yes? Yes. And so, but this is, this is when the enemy comes. And it is, t- watch me, it's toward the end of a season, just before a new season emerges, that spiritual resistance is its most intense. Now, that will mean different things for all of us because of the life that we lived and the, and the way the enemy has attacked us. Uh, many, many of us have walked through different seasons of trials and temptations and, 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 and different difficulties in life uh, that have framed our, our way of seeing and our way of moving forward. Uh, failures and disappointments and things that have come our way. 
And so you must understand, I can't identify what that is for you. But you will know it because it, every, because it keeps coming back. Every time you get to a certain point and things get real intense around your life. And there seems to be a resistance uh, of, you, of, of the new season that God is trying to emerge. But I want to encourage you that resistance doesn't, doesn't come at the beginning of a thing. It comes at the end of a thing. It doesn't come when you launch out. It, does, it, it doesn't come when you step in. It comes when you get ready to step out into. And there becomes a, a resistance trying to contain us, trying to limit us, trying to cause us to stay where we are. You, 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 un, you understand this. And, and, and so when, a, when, when an individual goes forward, it is a battle that we must fight and press through in our own faith. When a body of believers come together and press forward, it is a battle that can only be won together. In other words, even though I may be the pastor of Fresh Start Church, I can't take Fresh Start Church to the next season. Why? Because the next season isn't about me. The next season is about us. And the only way we can get into the next season is if we move into the season together. Somebody say yes. And so uh, obviously, uh, so when, when, when God begins, when a season is marked, and I believe this season that we're moving into this week is marked. I believe it's marked. Obviously, the enemy knows this, so therefore, we we must not be surprised if we have personal resistance in our life. We must not be surprised if there is corporate resistance in the spirit realm coming against us. But this is what I have learned. Corporate corporate resistance uh, can only be overcome by corporate resolve. That when there's a people that are resolved to move into the emerging season, when they have resolved, you see, this, this is what's so amazing. See, Paul says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And uh, so, so Paul, it, Paul had learned th- this amazing truth. Pray without ceasing. And, and I think the reason Paul understood this is because Paul, the great apostle, uh, was always pressing on the next thing. Th- that's what Paul, the apostle, the apostolic, don't let the word apostolic uh, um, Confound you simply means as the apostles did, as the New Testament church did. And, and so when, when uh, Paul was always pressing on something that he had never done before, going somewhere that he had never been before. Paul said, I, I, Paul did not get in to going where other guys had been. He was always looking for a place where the gospel had not been preached yet. And to preach it in a way it had never been preached before. The only reason he would go back to other places is to check on the work that he established there. But if he wasn't checking on what he had already established, he was looking for to go. He was always looking. So Paul understood, I must pray continually. I must pray without ceasing. Because he understood Paul was a man of emerging seasons constantly. Looking for another place. Looking for another time. Looking for some way to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are y'all getting this? So what? We, so then Paul comes up to the church and Thessalonica said, pray without ceasing. Pray. I'm calling you beyond. I'm calling you beyond an activity of prayer, and I'm calling you to live in an attitude, in an atmosphere of prayer. And so this is what we understand. When Paul looked around his world, everything prompted him to pray. Everything prompted him to pray on some level. That's how he could pray without ceasing. Everything prompted him something. Everything moved him to God. Everything moved him in prayer. It moved him forward into dependent prayer. Prayer without ceasing, without a doubt, is the gateway in which God enters our world. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, we have to have strategic prayer. Obviously, we have to have times that we have set apart in our life that this is where I go. This is where I'm with God every day, and I, and I meet with him. Come on, y'all. A prayer meeting is a God meeting. That's why I'm so excited we're bringing the gap back because I believe next week, not where we're having a prayer meeting, but a prayer meeting is a God meeting. And you never know what's going to happen when God's people meet up. Amen. When divinity comes down and connects uh, uh, with humanity, supernatural things can happen. Amen. In the book of of Acts, when that happened, there was a suddenly that opened the heaven. In the book of Acts, when that happened, there was a shaking of the house. In the book of Acts, when that happened, there was a supernatural surprise when God released Peter out of prison and surprised the church that God actually answered their prayers beyond their own ability to believe. You've got to understand, when we come together next week, it's not just a prayer meeting. It is a God meeting. Amen. It is profound, but yet it is simple. It is man relating to God 
God, but yet it is, it is God coming out in all who he is and releasing his power among us. Yes? Yes. So I was, I was thinking about this whole concept, this prayer, prayer without ceasing, prayer without ceasing, and I, I realized there's two elements to this that really consumed the life of Paul. The first one, to pray, to, if, if you're going to live in the realm of prayer without ceasing, then, then we have to, the, the first one is intimacy. Intimacy. Paul, uh, Paul's love for God led him to live a life of God consciousness. See, if we're going to pray without ceasing, then we must be conscious of God constantly. And so, I just don't experience God when I enter my place of prayer. I just don't enter God's presence when I come to church. But I must be conscious of God at all times because God is with me everywhere I go. And so this is why everywhere Paul went and everything Paul saw prompted him to pray. Because he knew God was near. And he could just speak. You know, you could just speak to God. You, you can see an injustice, and you can ask God to intervene. Y'all, y'all getting this? But intimacy really is more about worship. And that no matter what Paul saw, he always had a worship. He always was thankful. He was always acknowledging God around him. And so the, the first element is intimacy. The second element is intercession. And so uh, his love for God led him to this life of God consciousness where he spoke to God constantly. But then it moved him to intercession. And that is the fact that, he, that his love for people pushed him to unceasing prayer on their behalf over and over and over again. Paul would open up his letters to the church that he had prayed for them. I prayed for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. And then he would go into how awesome God is and how great God is. Or he would start with talking about how, God, how great God is and how magnificent God is. But I have prayed. In other words, he's telling them that, that, he, that he lives in the realm of God. He lives in the presence of God. And he is constantly bringing them uh, with him when he goes and meets with God. Do you realize you can do that? Do you realize that we can actually... Uh, take people with us into the presence of God. That you can take their name before God. That you can take their situations before God. That intercession is when you take people's other, uh, the needs of others before God on their behalf. You take that into the presence. Let me carry. It's like taking that person, literally taking them and carrying them and setting them at the throne of God and said, God, this is what you need to do. God, we need, we need you to intervene in their life. God, we need you to do something supernatural over their life. Amen. And that, that, it, that is intercession in, in, in its purest form. And so, and so what, we, what we understand then is this, that prayer without ceasing is Paul had learned to live, to live in the prayer zone. Paul had learned, or the throne zone. Paul had learned to live in the throne zone. Paul had learned to, to know what it means, that any, any moment he could, he could lose a prayer. Uh, he didn't have to press into the throne. He was there. He lived in it. He lived there. He, he, he was right at the throne of God constantly. That's where he lived. See, please, please understand, Jesus willingly went to the cross so we could boldly go to the throne. Amen. God's looking for some people that boldly go to the throne. Amen. God's looking for some people with confidence. God's looking for some people that want to live near the throne. And how do you do that? You do that in worship. And you do that in warfare. Amen. Look, we, we, we war. We war in, in our worship. And we war at the throne of God. And, and, and understanding this. Hey, hey we don't have. Look. I, and, I, and I've said this myself. And there's nothing wrong with it about storming the gates of hell. And I believe in that. But you know what? Really, if we'll storm the throne of God, if we'll storm the throne of God, we can break down the gates of hell. Amen. If we will worship at the throne, intercede at the throne, and understand that God is awesome and mighty and big, and he is an overcoming God, amen, and he has overcome anything the enemy has ever thrown at him, and that he will never bow to the enemy, and knowing this, that we live, when you live at the throne zone, that's what Hebrews 4, 16 says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. I love that. Well, he's talking about boldly to the throne, coming boldly to the throne. Why? That we might obtain. 
that we might obtain, that we might grab hold of mercy, that we might grab hold of grace. Amen? And, and, and so uh, th- this was so powerful to me when I was looking at this, and I thought, well, how, well, what does it look like? What does it look like to pray without ceasing? What does it look like uh, to live in the throne zone? What does it look like to live in, the, in, 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 in such a level of God consciousness uh, that you're always worshiping and yet you're always warring on the behalf of others? I mean, what, is, what does that look like? What, what does it look like to, to come boldly to the throne of God? And, and, and what will you experience there? And there's three things I want to share with you real quickly. Tonight. Number one is relationship. Relationship. I know this may sound simple, but I, but I want to go over it and over it and over it again. Relationship is the entryway to experiencing the throne, the power, and the authority of the throne of God. Uh, relationship is, is, means we, uh, we have great authenticity or greater authenticity in our relationship uh, with God. You see, many people think that prayer is fighting God to get him to invade our life. It is not trying to get God to do something in the earth, and we wrestle with God. Uh, 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 but, 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 but please understand, prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance. It's embracing his eagerness. It, it, it is a relationship. It, it, it's so simple, but yet it is so profound. And, and please understand, it, 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 to understand this, you must understand the heart of God. You must understand this, that, that if we relate to God, uh, through a lens of shame and guilt, uh, that we won't pray. It, we won't pray. And if we do pray, uh, we feel like it's out of duty. We feel like I'm trying to make God love me, so I'll pray. Uh, that, that's not going to get anywhere. That makes prayer hard. That makes prayer uh, not fruitful. Uh, but if we will ever understand the heart of our Father, and if we will understand according to Luke 15, 20, that our Heavenly Father is a watching, running, weeping, laughing, embracing, kissing God. Amen. Uh, that, that was the response of the father to the prodigal son, uh, that he ran after him. And, and so I want us to understand that tonight because, you see, please, please know this, that when God sees us pressing toward the throne and our heads are hung low in shame, that he will move toward us in love. He will move toward us in grace. Uh, he will move toward us in joy and reaching out to us, to, to embrace us, and to kiss away our guilt and our shame. You see, if you're waiting on a, a time that you finally feel worthy, you will never get there. Entering the presence of God is not about feeling worthy. Entering the presence of God is knowing that he is worthy. The lamb that was slain is worthy. And because he was worthy, and because he died on the cross, and because I put my faith in him, today I have become worthy, and therefore I can run. And you'll never get, you never get good enough to be there without Jesus. And so, be, so to live at the throne, it has to be relational. It has to be relational, you see. Relationship is important uh, to living at the throne of God. So, but after relationship is, is, is the next thing that I begin to think about, about, about living in the throne zone. And, and, and it, it, because it literally moves, it moves us from relationship to leadership. And what I, what I mean by that, now we're, we're moving from a greater authenticity to a greater alignment with God. This, this, is, this is important. Because relationship is the beginning of it. You have to really have that firm faith in Jesus and what he has done for us. And that I, I don't stand before the Father guilty and, and, and in shame anymore. I stand before him forgiven and righteous and accepted in the beloved. And so now that that is settled, then, we, then our prayers move, take on a deeper uh, understanding and we move to the place of leadership. Our Bible says in Romans 8.14, it says, for as many are, are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You see, relationship will lead us into a resolve to discover God's direction. I want to know, where are you headed, God? What are you doing, God? You see, it, 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 this, this, this gives us power for impact. Uh, this, this is what we receive at the throne. It gives us a correct strategy for a current situation. It helps us to know what to do. It helps us to know what to pray. Watch this. In 1 John 5, 
uh, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have approaching God to the throne zone. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Did you get that? That's so powerful. This, this, this is the sure way to get your prayers answered. This is the sure way uh, to, to pray a prayer and know without a doubt God is going to answer your prayer. You see, uh, what, what it's teaching us here is, is that uh, the closer we get to God, the more we pray right. And the more we pray right, the more we will receive. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask amiss. You're asking me stuff that has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. You're asking me, you're asking me to do stuff over your life. That's not even what I'm doing right now. That's not what even I'm trying to do right now. You're asking me to do stuff in your church. I'm not even doing that right I'm not worried about that right now. God has said, this is what I'm doing, and, and this is my plan. This is what I've marked the season for, and now I need somebody in the earth to get close enough to me to hear what I'm saying so they can say it back to me so I can do it. That's simple, isn't it? Yes. It, 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 it's called greater alignment. It's called us getting, getting ourselves in line with what God is saying and what God is doing and what God is speaking. And so he's, lo- he's looking uh, uh, to get some people in that, in, in that place, you see. And so, so he's saying, listen, listen, Fresh Start Church, I'm calling you back to the place of prayer. I'm calling you on Wednesday nights together, together uh, in the throne zone uh, so I can speak to you prophetically, so I can lose my purpose, I can lose my will, I can lose my divine direction. And so you can together can speak it back to me. You together can declare. You can, de- can de- together can say, amen, yes, Lord, let it be so. Let it be done. That, that, that what I want to do will be done in the earth, amen. And so I'm so convinced of this. And I'm so excited tonight what God is getting ready to do over the house that, that I've that I just been so filled uh, with anticipation about Wednesday night about getting started. Amen. I've been holding back. I've been wanting to do it last week and this week. And I'm like, no, nope, no, we got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait because God is getting ready. It's a moment. It's a marked time. And when we gather in this place next Wednesday night, it's going to go boom. I believe that. I believe that. Somebody shout relationship, leadership. See, the greater our relationship, the more we desire the leadership of God in our life. And then that brings us to the last one tonight, and that is partnership. Partnership. Greater authenticity, greater alignment, and then partnership is greater authority. I believe God is wanting to move Fresh Start Church to a place of greater Authority in prayer. Living in the throne zone, we're right there all the time. We're right there all the time. And so wherever we are, though Fresh Start Church may be spread all over a city, and there's hundreds spread all over a city, prayer is going up. We're constantly, continually praying. The Jesus in you, the great intercessor is praying, speaking, crying out. Through you, through me. And when we come together, the Jesus in you and the Jesus in me, all of us come together and we bring that spirit of intercession together. The great interceder that is in you, the great interceder that is in me, when we come together, oh, come on. I'm talking about partnership. I'm talking about twofold partnership, and that is our partnership with God and then our partnership with each other. Our Bible says in Romans 8, 17, watch this. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ. And if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Yes. See, please, please, please understand that God is into partnership. God could do anything he wants to do at any time. But God has chosen to partner. He has chosen to cause us to be co-heirs with Christ Jesus. He has brought us into the family business. He has brought us into the situation. Amen. He's brought us into this deal. And he said, if I can find some people that aren't afraid to suffer with me, then, 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 I, then those are the people that I will release my glory on. If I can find some people that will get down in this thing and work through it, he said, then that, that's the people that will see 
my glory, that will see my greatness. You see, that this verse in Romans 18 conveys the idea of authority. Authority. It's, it's delegation of authority. It's God saying, listen, you are co-heirs. You are co-laborers with me. Yeah, we're going to do this thing, and we're going to do it together. God could do it by himself, but he says, I don't want to do it by myself. I want to do it with my sons. I want to do it with my daughters. I want them to step up in the business with me. I want them to work with me and walk with me and war with me. Are y'all hearing me tonight? It's called partnership. And God has always intended a partner with his church. He's always intended for the church to arise, even to a point that God said, there are some things that I won't do until my church arises and will ask me to do it. They have to come into agreement and, and let it be established on earth as it is in heaven. Yes? And so this is so powerful. When you talk about partnership, partnership, you see, it, it, this is crucial. It is crucial, church, that, that our praying is engaged in seeing breakthroughs happen now. It is crucial that we pray at the level that we expect to see things change over our house and over this house. It's important that when we pray, we just don't lose prayers and say, oh, well, there's prayers out there. But it's time we begin to pray at such a high level of authority that we, be, we believe breakthroughs are going to happen right now. We know, there's, we know we can pray into the future, but we got to get some things done now before we can ever get to the future. Are y'all hearing me? And right now is a marked time. Uh, uh, Evangelist Pat Shastline said it so well. There's been a spirit of containment over this house for way too long, and there's only one thing that's going to break it through, and it's the prayers of the people of God coming together. Anytime God has, has determined to do something great, he has called his people together to pray. Amen. And in, in the Old Testament, it was called a solemn assembly. In the New Testament, it said he gathered them together in a house, and they prayed. They assembled themselves together together. And they prayed. And I want you to know, this is a marked time. This is a season of greatness. And God is wanting some people that will stand up and believe that when they pray, they're going to see the answers to their prayers now. Somebody say now. David said it himself. He said, I would have lost hope unless I believed I would have see the good, I would have seen the goodness of the Lord manifest in my time, manifest in my age, manifest in my life. Absolutely, there's some things we'll never see. They will take place after we're long gone. But there are some great things that God wants to do in this age and in this time now. And I can't worry about what's happened in the past. And I can't really worry so much about the future. I must pray in the now and bring breakthrough now. Somebody shout now. This happens when we come into partnership with God. Amen. Amen. And when we come into partnership with each other, it happens. It, it's, it's, it, we've, all, we've all heard the analogy about the elephant and the mouse crossing on the bridge. You heard that? It's, 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 it's this, this bridge, this great bridge. And this huge elephant is getting ready to walk across the bridge. And the mouse jumps on top of the elephant. And the elephant takes off across the bridge. And as the elephant's crossing the bridge, that great bridge starts swinging and rocking. And so they get, to the other, they get to the other side of the bridge, and the mouse flips the elephant on the top of his head and said, man, didn't we make that bridge shake? This is partnership. The fact is, God's the elephant, we're the mouse. But God can shake some things. He just needs some people whose faith is praying for the now, to see things happen now. You see, it's the vision of breakthrough that adds to the immediacy of our prayers. And so what I'm saying is as we come together, let's believe for immediate results. Because this is a marked time. We've called prayer before. We've had corporate prayer meetings before. We've done all these things before, but there's something special about this moment. I believe it is a marked time. I believe it is a marked time. Because it is a marked time as we come together, I believe that we can see immediate results. We're going to be, see immediate testimonies of the goodness of God over your house and the goodness of God over this house. Amen. We're going to see all containment broken off, and we're going to see a release of amazing flow of the goodness of God into the house. Amen. And the goodness of God over your house. I believe that. And so always, always remember this. Prayer power is available now. Prayer power is available right now. When we pray, we can experience it. Now, all authority, all authority, all authority belongs to God. It always has, and it always will. All authority belongs 
to God. You know, we, we understand as you go through the Bible that there was a time all authority belonged to God and that God gave some to man and then man lost it to Satan and then Satan had this authority. Jesus came to take it back. Satan tried to give it back, tried to get him to take it from him, but he said, no thanks, I'll wait. I'll wait because I understand before I receive it, I've got to go to the cross and I've got to suffer a little bit and then I've got to come up out and then I've got to go to glory. He said, no, I, I don't need your kingdom. I don't need your authority because he understood that when he went through, the, after he went through the cross and after he went through all of that, that he would receive all authority again back from God, that he would go and take it from Satan. He wouldn't have to receive it from him. He would take it from him. And then he, through the power of the cross at Calvary, he defeated the enemy and he took the keys back. He took the authority back. And then we all know he took that authority and he gave it to his disciples, representing his church, that he has given us all authority. All authority belongs to God, but now has, God has given all authority to his church. And we need to take that authority and begin to press for immediate results, impress for immediate uh, 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 breakthroughs in our life. Amen. We it's our time to take down the enemy, and it is our time to experience breakthrough. The vision of seeing God's authority now ought to make us pray all the time because every time I pray, I am releasing the authority of God into a situation that can change any moment. Somebody say yes. Amen. Why don't you all stand up tonight? We're at a crucial point. We're at a point where we must press together in prayer. This is why next Wednesday night we will meet and we will worship and we will war. We will have a time of intimacy. We will have a time of intercession. It will be powerful. From 7 to 8, it will be an hour that will change the world. It's time for us. It is a time for us where we don't just soak in. It is a time for us where we break through. It's not just, oh, bless me. It's I'm breaking through. It's a time of building in the spirit. It, that's, that's new to many people and many Christians because we just want to be blessed. But let's grow up. And let's build this, the things in the spirit. Let's break through. Let's see the goodness of God. Let's see what God wants to do in our life and in our church. Let's see these things. And, um, but this, let me, let me this, just say this tonight, in that it's always easier to believe God to take you back to your, your last place of success and blessing than to break through into a new season, to something you've never seen before. This, this is why many people never move to an emerging season with God because, they, well, you know, I remember God was blessing and moving. We just need to get that back. It's always easier to go back than to press into a new season. This is why people go in cycles in their life. It's why they're up and down. But we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to press through a level to where all that we've walked through and been through and all the cycles have been broken and limitation and containment is off and we're stepping into a whole other season of, of the goodness of God. And we're going to, and I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself, but we can do it together. Amen. Would you just lift your hands, please? Father, I ask you tonight just to do an awesome work. Jesus, you paid a high price to defeat the enemy that we might be a victorious people. And so I thank you tonight that you are bringing this house together under a spirit of prayer. That there is going to be a higher level of relationship, leadership, and partnership in the spirit. There's just going to be an amazing authenticity and alignment and authority in this house. 
that we will see the goodness of God. That breakthroughs are imminent. They're close. <clears throat> and so in the name of Jesus, I come against all resistance in the spirit realm. I command every plot, plan, and ploy of the enemy to fall to the ground null and void. Every satanic attack, every spiritual assassin set against the men and the women of God to fall to the ground now. And I thank you, God, that you are all-powerful and that you have overcome the evil one and that you are establishing your victory over your people and over this house. And I thank you right now, Lord, that breakthrough is close, that there is a turning and there is a loosening. And I thank you for that right now, that we will stand amazed at your glory and your greatness tonight. And we praise you for it, Father. Uh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and let there be a shout of victory in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen.